3.2 maximum and minimum on an interval. This is a nice easy lesson for my lovely calculus students. You're going to find the calculations are easy and um, even the word problems aren't all that difficult. Hooray, hooray. So how do we find a maximum on an interval? So you have to remember the keyword here is on an interval. So to find the maximum, so this is what we call the algorithm, which is the rule that you're going to use in order to find out where this maximum values occur. So to find it, you find where the slope is zero and solve. That translates into take the derivative, right? The derivative, we're doing calculus, and set it equal to zero because that's where the slope is going to be zero, right? Where the slope is zero is where you have maximum or minimum values. In addition, you must test the endpoints of the interval. So if I had an interval that was between, see, this is my graph. So if I said between this line here and this line here, you would see that you would have a max and a minimum, but you would also have a high point right here that would be higher than this one. So you have to check what the interval is and you're going to check and test those endpoints to see if they are higher than where the slope is zero because the slope obviously would not be zero here right okay so the extreme values is just another way of saying max or minimum values the absolute extrema are the largest or small, smallest value of a function over its domain so if we were looking at this function um, the entire function over its entire domain you would be able to say that it has an absolute minimum here, a local minimum here, and a local max here. It does not have an absolute maximum value because the function continues. So over its domain, we don't know what the maximum value is. It's infinity, which isn't a number. Okay, another little thing you have to watch out for. Note well here, the function must be differentiable on the interval. So if I gave you this function and said, uh, find the max and minimum values over this interval, you'd say, oh, but when x is 2, I can't take the derivative at that point because the function is discontinuous there. So we can't apply the algorithm to this function. So let's look at one that you can work with, and that would be this function here. It's number 4e from your homework textbook. So it gives you this function f of x equals 4x over x squared plus 1 on this interval between minus 2 and 4. And your job is to use the algorithm for finding max or minimum values and determine the absolute extreme values of the function on the given interval. Okay, so let's take the derivative. This is calculus. You always take the derivative. And we're going to use the quotient rule. So there's my ho d high minus high d ho over ho squared, ho, 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 ho's always go first. My students thought that was very funny. Okay, so here's my derivative. I need to simplify it. So I'll simplify the numerator because I want to be able to set this numerator equal to zero. And you're going to use that a lot in calculus when we do some curve sketching. You want to be able to simplify it nicely and find out where it's going to be zero. So 4x squared minus 8x squared, that's minus 4x squared plus 4. And I'm going to be setting this equal to 0. And obviously what's in the denominator is irrelevant. Uh, well, it's not irrelevant, but it is irrelevant for finding where the slope is 0. To find where the slope is 0, I want to set the numerator equal to 0. Now before you begin, you must make a, mis a statement. So for max or min values set f prime x equal to zero. So this is a very important statement that you're going to have to make when you're doing a good analysis of a, a curve. And we're going to do lots of that. So get used to writing out, why are you setting this equal to zero? You can't just say, oh, I'll just set it to zero. Why? So in mathematics, it's very important that people be able to understand why you did something. Okay, you can't just throw a bunch of numbers around and make it neat, of course. So I set minus 4x squared plus 4 equal to 0. I bring the 4 over. That's negative 4 divided by negative 4. I get x squared is equal to 1. So that means x is equal to, don't forget, the plus and minus 1. 
Okay, so now I have to check the height of the function. So this is where you might make a silly mistake. And that is that if you're finding the height of the function, the height of the function, you have to use the function. Don't use its derivative, because obviously if you put in plus or minus into this derivative, you would get zero. And then that wouldn't make any sense at all, would it? So what I want to do is check the function. Check the function. Not the derivative. Okay, so I'm going to find f at minus 2. So let's plug that in. We're going to get negative 8 over negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. So that's minus 8 fifths. I'm going to do f at negative 1, which was where I had 0 slope. And that's going to give me minus 4 over 2 or minus 2. I'm going to check f at positive 1, and that's going to give me 4 over 2, which is 2. And I'm going to check f at 4. So f at 4 is going to be 16 over 17. Okay, so now I've got all, all I have to do is play the numbers game, right? Where's, where's the lowest value? So my minimum value is going to occur here. So this is my minimum. And my maximum, minimum, too many N's and M's. So minimum of negative 2 when X is negative 1. And the maximum value, well, it's going to be this one here. So the slopes that I, the ones where I found 0 slope. So this is my max. And you should make a nice statement like, therefore, max value of 2 when x is equal to 1 and a minimum value of negative 2 when x is equal to negative 1. And that's all you have to do. Oops, I was off the page. Okay, so that's all you have to do in order to find max min on an interval. Make sure you first those three things, right? You have to have a function that's continuous, you have to set it to zero and solve, and thirdly, you have to check the end points of the function. So in this case, minus two and four, and whatever they give you, make sure you're checking and plugging them back into the original function. And that's your lesson. Hope you're having a great time with calculus. I think it's a lot of fun. Hope you're enjoying it, and don't forget to subscribe.